Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today is the second lecture in the bone pathology uh, or orthopedic module. Uh, you have already learned about the classification of the bone diseases and uh, some basic definitions. Now we are going to study the developmental abnormalities in the bone cell matrix and structure. For convenience, this lecture has been divided into two segments. Today we are going to cover first segment and in the next, next lecture we are going to learn about the uh, the second segment of this these disorders. My name is Professor Dr. Naseem Ahmed and I am working at uh, Dow Medical College, Karachi. These are the references for uh, this uh, lecture and uh, my email address is also mentioned. So if you have any problem or any query, you can email me. These are the learning objectives for today's lecture. At the end of this lecture, the fourth year MBBS student should be able to describe the different form of bone cell and bone matrix, explain bone remodeling, and describe the pathogenesis of different types of bone disorder related to bone cell matrix and structure. Before starting the lecture, I would like to show you some clinical scenarios. Number one is a 15 years old boy present to the emergency department with suspected fracture of the left tibia and fibula following a fall. He tells you that he has broken several bones in the past and this that his mother has a bone disease. There is another scenario where a two months old baby boy is brought to the emergency department by his adoptive parents who tell you that their baby has been fussy and seems to cry whenever his left arm is touched. So, what is bone? There are about uh, 206 bones in the body that comprise about 12% of the body weight. Uh, when we talk about bone, we consider it as an organ or as a tissue. When we talk about bone as an organ, uh, this term refers to the bone in toto, means uh, whole bone with the set articular cartilage, the bone marrow, the adipose tissue, and the various arteries and vessels on uh, vessels and uh, nerves that are uh, attached or uh, that are present in the bone. And while we talk about bone as a tissue, this term refers to histopathological appearance of the bone. And uh, so this uh, bone as a tissue is more a microscopic term. Then beside providing the scaffold mechanical scaffold for the uh, attachment of numerous uh, muscles ligaments etc the bone also provide mechanical support it is an important organ for force transmission it protects internal organ and it is a reservoir for many minerals so it is and has got an important role in the mineral homeostasis also it has a very important function of lifelong hematopoiesis and uh, when we divide it into parts it can be divided into matrix and numerous types of cells we are going to see later uh, grossly the bone can be divided into many parts here you can see the diaphysis that is the shaft of the bone and these blue areas are physes or growth plates. The area below this, uh, this growth plate is epiphysis and the area near the diaphysis and above this uh, growth plate is metaphysis. Each bone is covered by a fibrous tissue that is termed as periosteum. This periosteum has got two layers, the outer fibrous layer and inner cambium layer. The inner cambium layer is, uh, uh, is, has got the tendency to regenerate and is attached to the underlying cortex through Sharpie's fiber that goes perpendicular to this uh, periosteum. So, we divided bone into matrix and cell. The matrix is the extracellular component of the bone and it is divided into two parts, the osteoid and various minerals. 
the minerals comprises about 65% of 65% of the uh, this uh, matrix while 35% is the osteoid the main part of this mineral is, is present in the form of hydroxyapatite and this is responsible for actual hardness of the bone while this uh, mineral component or this uh, matrix is also responsible or also serves for the 99% reserve of calcium and 85% of the phosphorus. There are many proteins in the uh, bone and uh, major protein is type 1 collagen while other proteins are also present in a smaller amounts that are the glycosaminoglycans and there are many other proteins present that we are going to discuss later. The proteins that are present in the matrix are derived from two sources. One is the osteoblast and another is the protein that are concentrated from the serum. The proteins that are concentrated from the serum are beta 2 microglobulin and albumin while the osteoblast derived protein are type 1 collagen, cell adhesion protein, calcium binding proteins, protein involved in mineralization, various enzymes, growth factors and cytokines. These are the major heads and or major groups under which there are many proteins that are responsible for uh, formation of bone matrix and uh, these are the osteopontin, fibronectin, thrombospondin, osteonectin, fiber and bone cellular proteins. Among these proteins, the important one is osteocalcin. This osteocalcin is a specific marker for osteoblastic activity and it can be measured in the serum while the growth factors and cytokines as they do anywhere else in the body they are responsible for growth and differentiation and metabolism of the cells or of the of the uh, of the cells that are present in this area and osteopontin is uh, another protein and this osteopontin has got a special amino acid sequence that is a, a, a arginine glycine and aspartate and this sequence is recognized by integrins that is an essential part of the uh, bone extracellular matrix So now the osteoblasts are responsible for the deposition of the collagen type 1 in the bone. This deposition can result in two morphologies. One is the haphazard deposition of the uh, collagen and this haphazard deposition in the pattern of random wave like a random wave it is termed as woven bone and uh, when this is laid down in an orderly layered fashion it is termed as lamellar bone so this woven bone is usually now seen in the uh, fetal skeleton and base of the growth plate it produces quickly and it resists forces equally from all directions this woven bone is uh, present in the fetal skeleton but when it is present in the adult it should always be considered as pathological but this is not diagnostic you cannot uh, say what the specific pathology is there you can say that there is some pathology as this woman bone is present in the adult but you cannot pinpoint or specifically diagnose that lesion so in contrast the lamellar bone gradually replaces the woven bone during growth it is deposited much more slowly but this lamellar bone is more stronger than the woven bone as far as the types of bone cells are concerned there are four major types of bone cells osteoporogenitor cells, osteocytes, osteoblasts and osteoclasts. The osteoporogenitor cells are derivatives of primitive stem cells. Osteocytes are mature bone cells. 
Osteoblasts are bone forming cells and osteoclasts are exclusive cells that are responsible for resorption or destruction of the bone. And uh, they are also responsible for the breakdown of matrix and for uh, remodeling and release of calcium. The bone uh, remodeling is a continuous process that happens due to synergistic action of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. The osteoporogenitor cells are derived from pluripotent mesenchymal stem cells and uh, these differentiate into osteoblasts and osteocytes. Uh, the stem cell can give rise to adipocytes, myoblast, fibroblast or osteoblasts. The osteoprogenitor cells are found in marrow, periosteum or all supporting structures within the marrow cavity and uh, it can be stimulated by various growth factors. Uh, these cells are not easily recognized by light microscope because they are a small non-specific stellate or spindle shaped cells and they produce offspring that differentiate into osteoblasts. The osteoblast formation is a process that is governed by uh, Runs to CVFA transcription factor pathway or wind beta catenin signaling pathway. The osteoblasts are the protein synthesizing cells and uh, they produce and mineralize bone tissue. These cells are derived from mesenchymal progenitor cells and these progenitor cells are resp also responsible for the uh, formation of chondrocyte, myocyte, adipocyte and fibroblast. These cells, the osteoblasts are large uh, mononuclear and polygonal cells and uh, they are arranged in a line along the bone surface. There is uh, uh, an eosinophilic zone of organic bone matrix that is under the thin layer of osteoblast and this eosinophilic zone of organic bone matrix is termed as osteoid and this osteoid is not mineralized there is another term that is called mineralization leg, leg time and this mineralization leg time is the time from deposition of the osteoid to its mineralization. It is approximately 12 days. The protein synthesis capacity is uh, increased in these osteoblasts and this is reflected by increased number of cellular machinery such as endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus and mitochondria with numerous calcium containing granules. The cytoplasmic extensions or cytoplasmic processes that extend into the osteoid and contact cells they embedded in the matrix and these are termed as osteocytes. The sensation of these osteocytes and osteoblasts prevent the bone calcium equalization with that of extracellular matrix. When the osteoblast is inactive, it flattens on the surface of the bone or it is transformed into the osteocyte, so two fates of the osteoblast. It has got many receptors 
that bind regulatory hormones such as parathyroid hormone, vitamin D, leptin, and estrogen. There is a uh, there is presence of cytokine growth factor and extracellular matrix protein and these osteoblasts also express several factors that regulate the differentiation and function of osteoclast so osteoclastic activity is also dependent on osteoblastic activity so both these cells work in synergy This photomicrograph is showing a bone tissue and uh, this single arrow is pointing toward osteoprogenitor cell that is the small cell and this small cell has got a central blue nucleus and the uh, cytoplasm is also bluish while the double arrow is pointing towards an osteoblast active osteoblast that is synthesizing bone matrix and these osteoblasts are a bit larger and they have got eccentric uh, nucleus eccentric large nucleus and uh, the cytoplasm is pinkish in color and this in this lies in close proximity with the bone surface now the osteocyte the osteocyte is an osteoblast that is completely embedded in bone matrix and is isolated in a lacunae. The osteoblast plus newly formed or newly deposited matrix is an astrocyte. The osteocyte deposit small quantities of the bone around the lacunae, but with time they lose the capacity for protein synthesis. Uh, morphologically, these osteocytes have a small hyperchromatic nuclei and numerous processes that extend through bony canals that are called canaliculi and these uh, communicate through these processes or these uh, uh, through these canaliculi to the other osteocytes or osteoblast so there is a continuous crosstalk between the osteoblast and osteocyte and between the osteocytes the osteocytes are they are responsible to control calcium and phosphate level in the microenvironment and they are also an important regulator of bone remodeling as they detect mechanical forces and they translate them into biological activity a process that is called mechanotransduction now osteoclast osteoclast are exclusive cells for bone resorption these cells are derived from hematopoietic progenitor cells that are also precursors of the bonocyte and macrophages uh, there are many cytokines and growth factors that regulate the osteoclastic differentiation and maturation important among these are macrophage colony stimulating factor or MCSF interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor the osteoclasts are also termed as physiologic giant cell these are multinucleated cells and they contain many lysosomes and rich in hydrolytic enzymes they are formed from fusion of uh, many circulating mononuclear precursors and they have got a lifespan of about two weeks. These are found on small depressions on the bone surface and these are termed as Hauship lacunae. By electron microscopy, you can see that these osteoclasts form a tight seal on the surface of the mineralized bone as you can see here that uh, these are isolating the that particular area of the bone and making a tight seal and uh, they can only act if the bone is mineralized if the bone is unmineralized they do not perform their function they make a tight seal <coughs> like a gasket and in this micro environment or mini environment 
they release acid hydrolysis and due to this the pH of this microorganic environment become 4.5 and this highly acidic environment that act as extracellular lysosome in fact a giant extracellular lysosome in this pro uh, proton rich or acidic environment the bone mineral is mobilized and expose organic bone matrix to the degradation by lysosomal enzymes okay so the degraded bone fragment are then transported to the opposite side of the osteoclast and then released to extracellular space to enhance its performance the surface area of this osteoclast that is facing towards the surface of the bone is increased by throwing it into many uh, folds many small folds and this increases its surface area and is termed as the ruffled border so first there is formation of a tight seal and this tight seal is uh, formed due to interaction of the surface integrin and uh, after the formation of tight seal there is liberation or secretion of numerous acetic and uh, neutral proteases especially the matrix metalloproteases and these the, these uh, matrix metalloproteases digest the organic and in inorganic component of the bone and as a result due to increase surface area by the ruffled border this uh, is this bone is resorbed by the osteoclasts by generating an acidic environment so this photomicrograph is uh, stained by hematoxylin and eosin stain and it is showing these uh, busy osteoclasts that are marked by these arrows and uh, these uh, are showing a tight seal that uh, is isolating this multinucleated giant cell uh, uh, and uh, this multinucleated giant cell is showing a ruffled border by these uh, uh, represented by these uh, cytoplasmic processes and this clear area is uh, the resorption pit so an array of plump osteoblasts are there these are these osteoblasts these plump osteoblasts are lying on the inner pink osteoid seam on the very inner side there is a dark purple area this dark purple area is representing the mineralized bone the osteocyte is actually an entrapped osteoblast and this actually is surrounded by bone matrix there is a small space that surround this entrapped osteoblast and this space is called lacuna there are few cytoplasmic extension that uh, come out of this uh, osteocyte and uh, these are basically communicating channels and these communicate with other osteoblast osteocyte and also with osteoclasts that is why all these cells they work in synergy during bone modeling and remodeling these processes or extensions are more prominent in this picture that is depicting these intercommunication we just discussed now this picture is showing uh, many osteoclasts that are multinucleated giant cell they are lying on bone surface and there is presence of resorption pit and scalloping of the bone so this is electron microscopy and electron micrograph of this osteoclast is showing that uh, there is microscopic enfolding of the plasma membrane of this side these uh, giant cell the osteoclast and this uh, ruffled border marked by r has increased the uh, the surface area of the osteoclast this osteoclast is uh, juxtaposed to the bone surface now bone growth and development the homeobox gene is the gene that encode various transcription factor that are essential for the 
normal development of the skeleton and this in turn determine skeletal morphogenesis. Most bone are first formed as a model cartilage or cartilage and laga. Uh, although they start to appear on the fifth week of the gestation, the process of encounter lossification begins uh, around the eighth week of gestation. The osteoclast-like cells are responsible for the removal of cartilage and laga and canalization and this forms a medullary canal. This canal progresses along the length of the bone and concurrently the, there is generation of osteoblast that uh, osteoblasts are formed by periosteum in the mid shaft region. These osteoblasts deposit the beginning of cortex. This is the primary center of ossification. Then removal of the cartilage occur and the bone is uh, deposited in the epiphysis in centrifugal fashion. This is the secondary center of, of ossification. There is entrapment of a plate of cartilage between the expanding center of the ossification and that is the physis or growth plate. The chondrocyte within the growth plate or physis, they are responsible for the longitudinal growth. By undergoing a series of changes such as proliferation, growth maturation, apoptosis, etc., they, these process lead to the subsequent formation of trabeculae and expansion or longitudinal growth. And this process is controlled by a number of signaling pathways that include fibroblast growth factor receptor, bone morphogenetic protein, hedgehog protein, and parathyroid hormone related protein. As we have discussed earlier that the osteoclasts are exclusive cell for the bone resorption. So in the region of the apoptosis the matrix mineralizes and this mineralized matrix then resorbed by the osteoclast. As osteoclast only function on mineralized surfaces. So after apoptosis, there are some remnant struts and these remnant struts are then act as a scaffold for the deposition of bone on their surfaces. This is the structure that is known as primary spongiosa or primary bone trabeculae. A similar process occur at the base of the articular cartilage and by this mechanism bone increases in length and articular surfaces increases in diameter. The flat bone for example cranium and lateral portion of the clavicle are formed by intramembranous ossification in which a dense layer of mesenchyme is directly ossified by osteoblast without a cartilage and lug. And bone enlarges by deposition of new bone or on a pre-existing surface. This process is known as a positional growth. This slide is summarizing the activity of the growth plate which is resulting in encounter lossification. On the top of the picture you can see number one that is the normal resting highland cartilage and this is termed as reserve zone. Just underneath this reserve zone, there is formation of distinctive stacks or columns. These are the zone of proliferation. And here, chondrocytes undergo rapid mitosis that result in development of columns or stacks uh, of the chondrocytes. And uh, when these are hypertrophied, then they are termed as zone of maturation or hypertrophy. Then there is zone of mineralization just underneath the, this and this is also termed as uh, zone of calcification 
and it is marked by dying or dead chondrocyte that leave a cavity behind and this will later be filled by bone forming cells and then there is a zone of ossification or primary spongiosa and this we have just discussed and this primary spongiosa uh, is the area where there are osteoporogenitor cells and they invade and differentiate into osteoblast and after elaboration of matrix it become calcified on the surface of calcified cartilage this is followed by resorption of the calcified cartilage and uh, calcified bone complex all these processes are under some local and systemic factors one of these is growth hormone this growth hormone is secreted by anterior pituitary gland and it induces and maintains chondrocyte proliferation then there is thyroid hormone and this thyroid hormone act on proliferating chondrocyte to induce hypertrophy uh, in cretinism when there is a uh, uh, lack of thyroid hormone and in children there is uh, inactivity near the in the growth plate and this will lead to dwarfism then Indian hedgehog factor it is secreted locally by pre hypertrophic chondrocyte and coordinate chondrocyte proliferation and differentiation with osteoblast proliferation then parathyroid hormone related peptide is produced by perichondral stromal cell and early proliferating chondrocytes and it activates the parathyroid hormone receptor to maintain chondrocyte proliferation then vent growth factors express in growth plate proliferating zone and via frizzled and lrp56 receptor they activate beta catenin to promote chondrocyte proliferation and maturation then sox9 factor is a transcription factor that is expressed by proliferating but not hypertrophic chondrocyte and it is essential for differentiation of chondrocyte precursors the rungs 2 is another transcription factor that is expressed in early hypertrophic chondrocytes and immature mesenchymal cell and it controlled terminal chondrocyte and osteoblast differentiation. The FGF or fibroblast growth factor is secreted by a variety of mesenchymal cells, especially the FGF3 is important. Uh, that is linked to many uh, diseases that we will discuss later. And uh, this FGF acts on hypertrophic chondrocyte to inhibit proliferation and promote uh, differentiation. Then bone morphogenic protein or BMPs are member of transforming growth factor beta family and these are expressed at uh, various stages of chondrocyte development and have diverse effect on chondrocyte proliferation and hypertrophy at the growth plate. So mature skeleton is not static, it undergoes continuous change in the body. Now some basic concepts. The Basic multicellular unit or BMU is a functional unit of coupled osteoblast and osteoclast activity on the bone surface. These are local collection of osteocyte, osteoblast and osteoclast that work together to control bone formation and resorption creating a functional unit. In the early life there is a skeletal growth and enlargement of the bony structure and bone formation predominate. So this process is called modeling of the bone or you can say the bone is modeled. So what is remodeling? Uh, once the skeleton has attained maturity, there is continuous breakdown and renewal of bone for the maintenance of the skeleton. All this happens in logical order. There is osteoblast, uh, sorry, there is osteoclast attachment, bone resorption, osteoblast attachment and proliferation of osteoblast. And finally, matrix synthesis occur. 
in all basic multicellular unit do not confuse the basic multicellular unit with osteon that are cylindrical structures that contain a mineral matrix and living osteocyte these are connected by canaliculi that transport blood as these canaliculi contain both arteries and artery and vein they are aligned parallel to the long axis of the bone each osteon contain uh, lamellae which are layers of uh, compact matrix and these lamellae surround a central canal and this central canal is termed as haversian canal the event in the basic multicellular unit are controlled by cell to cell interaction and activity of cytokines there are various uh, mechanisms which are responsible for active differentiation and activation of osteo osteoclasts one is rank pathway which includes three factors one is transmembrane receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa b and uh, this is also named as rank the rank receptor is expressed on osteoclast precursors then there is a rank ligand that is expressed on the surface of the osteoblast there is another decoy receptors that uh, is formed by osteoblast and termed as osteoprotegrin osteoprotegrin block the uh, rank and uh, rank ligand interaction hence it is termed as decoy receptors and in the presence of osteoprotegrin osteoclast are not going to mature and differentiate when osteoprotegrin activity is decreased or diminished the rank and rank ligand bind to each another and after this interaction there is activation of nuclear factor kappa b which lead to the differentiation and maturation of osteoclast another pathway which is responsible for the differentiation and maturation of the osteoclast is mcsf pathway or macrophage colony stimulating factor pathway it is produced by osteoblast and its receptor is present on osteoclast precursors after macrophage colony stimulating factor and its receptor interaction there is a stimulation of tyrosine kinase activity that results in osteoclast formation this osteoprotegrin formation by the osteoblast cell is controlled by wingless interaction or vent beta catenin signal transduction pathway and uh, this is highly conserved pathway in humans and when wind proteins are produced by the osteoprogenitor cells they bind to the uh, these uh, bind to the uh, receptor for ldl receptor related uh, protein 5 and 6 which are present on osteoblast and activation of lrp5 and 6 receptor on the osteoblast triggers the activation of beta catenin and subsequent formation of osteoprotegrin in contrast what happens in osteocyte there is production of uh, sclerostin and this sclerostin has got the inhibitory effect on wind beta catenin pathway and uh, hence it promotes bone formation so these uh, uh, factors opg rank ligand rank lrp5 and 6 and sclerostin are important as any germline mutation in these may result in disruption of the metabolism of the bone cell and as a result congenital bone disorders so as we know that there is continuous cross talk between the osteoblast osteocytes and osteoclast in the basic multicellular unit and language they understand is through the alphabets of various proteins such as growth factors or cytokines or various protein involving signal transduction pathways this picture from uh, the robbins basis of pathology uh, and uh, start reading it from red circle that is showing 
when there is mechanical stress or biological stress through some hormone or cytokine there is activation of surface osteoblast or osteoprogenitor cell when these surface osteoblast activated by uh, these uh, are activated by this stress they start sending message to osteoclast precursor for their differentiation and maturation and initiation of microfracture on the bone surface as a result of this activation of osteoclast various matrix bound growth factors are liberated from the other side of the osteoclast and these are then released into that micro environment these matrix bound growth factors are in turn result in proliferation of osteoprogenitor cell so osteoprogenitor cell can be directly activated by stress or can be indirectly activated by activation of osteoclast osteoprogenitor cell produce active osteoblast and this occur by two processes one is uh, wingless interaction signal transduction uh, pathway and another is through bone morphogenic protein or bmps another cell that is involved in this process is uh, osteocyte and these osteocytes they form sclerostin this sclerostin has got inhibitory effect on beta catenin signal transduction pathway wind protein that are produced by osteoprogenitor cell these wind proteins are attached to lrp5 6 receptor that are present on the surface of osteoblast and they trigger beta catenin activation and formation of osteoprotegrin now we know that uh, the bone formation and bone resorption are tightly coupled and uh, there are two factors one is uh, osteoprotegrin and another is rank ligand the receptor activator for nuclear factor kappa b ligand and both of these factors they oppose each another and it is a ratio of uh, both of these that determine the activity of bone that is the modeling and remodeling of the bone there are some systemic factors that affect rank ligand and osteoprotegrin ex expression these are hormones such as parathyroid hormone estrogen testosterone and glucocorticoids vitamin d certain uh, inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin 1 and some growth factors such as bone morphogenetic protein these uh, factors act by altering the nuclear factor kappa b and wind beta catenin 6 signal transduction pathway the another uh, another pathway of the control of this bone activity is through the paracrine crosstalk between the constituents of the uh, basic multicellular unit the osteoblast osteoclast and osteocytes so coming back to this picture you can see that the osteoclast disassemble matrix protein and liberate these proteins in the environment so the bone tissue is broken down to its elemental unit and released into the micro environment and these elemental units subsequently they initiates its renewal another concept in bone homeostasis is peak bone mass this peak bone mass is uh, the amount of bone tissue that is present at the end of skeletal maturation and it is determined by various factors such as polymorphism in the receptor for vitamin D and LRP5 and 6 nutritional status of the body physical activity status of the hormone and age there is a steady continuous decrement in the bone mass after the age of 40 as the bone is resorption exceeds its formation 
bone remodeling enables the bone to adopt mechanical stress and uh, maintain its strength and regulate mineral homeostasis so bone remodeling is normal part of the skeletal maintenance it is initiated by cytokine receptor rank the receptor activator for nuclear factor kappa b on osteoclast and soluble factors are released in that local environment during the resorption the parathyroid hormone is the hormone uh, which aid in the recruitment of the osteoblast on the site and their activation to form new bone osteoclast possesses the receptor for calcitonin and this calcitonin inhibit osteoclast activity so the bone remodeling involves replacing old bone with newly formed uh, newly formed bone via coupled function of osteoblast and osteoclast and this is the bone remodeling unit now coming to developmental abnormalities in bone cell matrix and structure these are frequently genetic base they first become manifest in uh, earlier stages of life or uh, in childhood while the acquired diseases are usually detected in adulthood when we talk about developmental abnormalities we come across two terms one is dysostosis and another is dysplasia the dysostosis is developmental anomaly that result from localized problem in the migration of mesenchymal cell and formation of condensation and usually limited to a defined embryologic structure such as uh, the examples are aplasia supernumerary digit or syndactyly or craniosynostosis and these are the result of uh, some mutation in transcription factor such as homeobox gene while dysplasia is the result of mutation of regulator of skeletal organ, uh, organogenesis and uh, include signaling molecules such as growth factor and the receptor matrix uh, components such as type 1 or type 2 collagen or uh, these dysplasia they affect cartilage and bone tissue globally the dysplasias we have we have seen this dysplasia this term in the uh, in the neoplasia chapter also but when this dysplasia is considered under the heading of bone or it is it is studied with in relation with the bone it is not a malignant condition and uh, it is not like the premalignant lesions we or uh, the dysplastic changes we have seen in the epithelial malignancies so it is not a premalignant or malignant lesion when considered or studied in the bone so there are more than 350 skeletal dysostoses and dysplasias uh, that have been recognized and uh, luckily most of these are extremely rare so this table is from robbins and you can see that uh, each of this morphological uh, problem or uh, the dysostosis or dysplasia is uh, linked with a specific gene mutation that is uh, that is going to produce the effect so uh, you don't have to uh, remember all these then there are some diseases that are grouped under the head of defects in extracellular structure protein and among these we are going to study in detail the osteogenesis imperfecta then there are some disorders that come under the umbrella of uh, defects in hormone and signal transduction mechanism producing abnormal proliferation and maturation of chondrocyte and osteoblast under this head we will uh, see in detail the achondroplasia and thanatophoric dwarfism 
the schema for the categorization of the diseases in the bone cell matrix and structure are basically on the basis of the various steps, processes, hormones and factors that are involved in the bone homeostasis. Uh, one group of diseases is the malformation and diseases that are caused by defects in nuclear protein and transcription factor. Another group is the disease caused by defects in hormone and signal transduction mechanism. Then there is a group of disease that is associated with defects in extracellular structural protein and in this umbrella under this umbrella comes type 1 collagen disorders such as osteogenesis imperfecta and other uh, diseases uh, collagen related diseases that are associated with type 2 9 10 and 11 collagen then there is another group that is associated with defect and folding and degradation of the molecule uh, macromolecules such as mucopolysaccharidosis. Other major groups of the bone diseases are uh, diseases that are associated with defects in metabolic pathways, enzyme, eye channel and transporters. An important disease in this category is osteopetrosis that is also termed as marble bone disease. Then there are diseases that are associated with decreased bone mass and important and very important disease in this category is osteoporosis that is characterized by presence of spongy bones. Then uh, there is a group of disease that caused by osteoclast dysfunction. An important one in this uh, the osteoclast dysfunction disease is Paget's disease or osteitis deformans. Then there are diseases that are associated with abnormal mineral homeostasis and these are rickets and osteomalacia, hyperparathyroidism and renal osteodystrophy. So this group the malformation and disease caused by defect in nuclear protein and transcription factors we have seen its uh, uh, table earlier and uh, this is caused by genetic alteration that affect transcription factor uh, such as homeobox gene and uh, certain cytokine mutation and uh, it uh, is characterized by presence of various congenital malformation or dysostosis although these are very uh, rare conditions and they are characterized by failure of a bone to develop such as uh, congenital absence of phalanx rib or clavicle formation of an extra bone uh, that is supernumerary rib or digit fusion of two adjacent digits that is syndactylism or development of long spider like digit. Brachydactyly type D and E is uh, an entity that is caused by mutation in Hox D13 homeobox gene and it is characterized by shortening of the terminal phalanges of the thumb and big toe respectively. While cleidocranial dysplasia is an autosomal dominant disorder that is due to loss of function mutation in RUNX2 uh, pathway and it is characterized by patent fontanelles, delayed closure of cranial suture, vermin bone, delayed eruption of secondary teeth, primitive clavicles and short stature. Now the group of diseases uh, that is the defect in hormone and signal transduction protein and uh, important entity in this group is achondroplasia which is most common cause of short limb dwarfism and uh, it is an autosomal dominant disease which has got an incidence of about 1 per 25,000 live births for all ethnic group. The disease is of uh, epiphyseal chondroblastic development that lead to inadequate and chondral bone formation. There, this disease is a, a chondroplasia is associated with gain of function mutation in FGFR3 gene that is located on chromosome number 4, the short limb of the chromosome number 4 and 75% uh, of these uh, mutations arise de novo and these are associated with advanced paternal age. The FGF mediated FGFR3 activation normally inhibits 
endochondral growth. So this endochondral growth inhibition due to FGF mediated F, uh, GFR3 is attenuated, it is augmented when there is a gain of function and uh, this gain of function of this uh, FGFR3 then restricts the endochondral growth. So this disease, achondroplasia, is not associated with changes in longevity, intelligence, or reproductive status. The morphologically, the axial skeleton is normal, and it is uh, associated with shortened proximal extremities. The trunk is of normal size. The head is enlarged as compared to the rest of the body, and uh, there is bulging forehead, a small face conspicuous deeply indented bridge of the nose. This diagram is showing the effect of FGFR3 and FGF on the inhibition of proliferation and reduction of differentiation. You can see that when this FGF is attached to its receptor, it is uh, it leads to the STAT1 pathway and through STAT1 pathway, it uh, inhibits the proliferation of the DNA while also through the MAP kinase pathway, it, uh, it uh, leads to the reduction of differentiation. So, when there is gain of function mutation uh, in this FGFR3, that leads to uh, accentuated inhibition of uh, or greatly reduced differentiation of the endochondral cartilage. Achondroplasia is a disease of enchondral bone formation while the intramembranous ossification is normal. In this picture, you can see that uh, the epiphyseal growth plate of an uh, achondroplastic tar. The growth plate is greatly thinned at the zone of proliferation uh, or proliferative cartilage, and uh, this uh, zone of proliferative cartilage is extensively disturbed the zone of provisional calcification if uh, there it undergoes enchondral ossification but at a greatly reduced rate the transverse bars of the bone often seals off the growth plate and hence it prevents further bone formation and result in dwarfism the secondary centers of ossification and articular cartilage are normal. Another disease that come under the head of defect in hormone and signal transduction protein is thanatophoric dwarfism. This thanatophoric dwarfism is also due to gain of function mutation in FGFR3 uh, gene, but this mutation is more severe and hence it uh, its manifestation is uh, more severe and uh, there this is more severe phenotype that is resulting from fgfr3 gain of function mutation this disease as the name suggests this thanatophorus means that bearing and that bringing it is the most common lethal form of dwarfism and it accounts for about 1 per 20,000 live births. Uh, the morphologically, the, there is micromelic shortening of the limb, frontal bruising, relative macrocephaly, a small chest cavity, and bell-shaped abdomen. And uh, the respiratory insufficiency is due to underdeveloped thoracic cavity. Morphologically, the growth plate shows diminished proliferation of the chondrocyte and poor columnization, that is, disorganization in the zone of proliferation. So, under the head of defects in hormones and signal transduction protein, there is one group of diseases that is characterized by increased bone mass, and this increased bone mass is basically a manifestation of uh, many diseases that are caused by gain of function mutation in the gene that encode LRP5 and this LRP5 is the cell surface receptor that is associated with the activation of uh, osteoblast through the Vint beta 
get an in signal transduction pathway. Uh, the entities that are included in this group and these are associated with increased bone mass are and osteal hyperstosis, von Buchem disease and autosomal dominant osteopetrosis type 1 and these diseases are characterized by increased bone mass including cortical thickening, enlarged and elongated mandible, increased density and enlargement of the cranial vault and torus palatinus. Inactivating mutation in LRP5 will result in osteoporosis pseudoglioma syndrome. In this disorder, the skeleton is severely osteoporotic and result in fractures due to insufficient bone formation. Then there is another group that includes uh, the diseases that are due to defect in extracellular structure protein. Under this group, there are many diseases that are due to uh, mutation in major bone and cartilage collagens and uh, these are from collagen type 1 to type 11 especially the defects in type 1, 2, 9, 10 and 11 are important. Type 1 collagen disease is also known as osteogenesis imperfecta or brittle bone disease and it is most common inherited disorder of the connective tissue. It is a heterogeneous disorder that is caused by deficiencies in synthesis of type 1 collagen. There are more than 800 mutations that have been identified and these are due to autosomal dominant mutations in the type 1 collagen and both the alpha 1 and alpha 2, uh, alpha 2 chains of the collagen are affected and uh, it affects bone that has got a major part uh, in majority the type 1 collagen and other areas that have type 1 collagen such as joint, eye, ear, skin and teeth. Many of these type 1 collagen disease are uh, due to mutation that is uh, that involves the substitution of glycine residue in the triple helical domain of the collagen and uh, there are two types of the disease one is the mild skeletal abnormality and other type of the disease is severe or lethal uh, phenotype the one that is associated with mild skeletal abnormalities is due to mutation that result in decreased synthesis of qualitatively normal collagen while the severe or lethal phenotype are the result of mutation that lead to formation of abnormal polypeptide change that cannot be arranged in triple helix. Recently, cartilage associated protein and protein enriched proteoglycan 1 have also been linked with the rare variant of this disease. Osteogenesis imperfecta or brittle bone disease is a group of inherited heterogeneous disorder. Uh, which is characterized by abnormality of the connective tissue and exhibited uh, as uh, fragility of the bone. The mode of transmission is usually autosomal dominant while rarely it is transmitted as autosomal recessive disorder. The incidence of this entity is 1 in 20,000 live birth in United States uh, but there are some sporadic mutations are also recorded. Both there are two genes called 1A1 and called A1A2 uh, genes that are involved in the formation of mature type 1 collagen. And when any of this mutated uh, and usual mutation is the point mutation in which there is conversion of the glycine that occur at every third amino acid position into uh, bulkier amino acid or there can be alteration in the C-terminus or there can be deletion that lead to disrupted type 1 collagen fibril formation. So this uh, osteogenesis imperfecta by many type of mutations it is, it is seen that there are eight types of osteogenesis imperfecta so it is a heterogeneous group of diseases and uh, 
these mutations will result in defective or altered collagen synthesis, defective helical structure, or defects in other bone structural proteins. Type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta and type 4 osteogenesis imperfecta are compatible with life. The type 1 has got normal appearance at birth. There are fractures of many bones occurred during infancy and uh, the bone become fragile as uh, this uh, as fragile as a china doll and the color of the sclera is blue and this blue color is due to visible choroidal vein that are uh, visible due to deficiency in collagen fiber and uh, there is hearing loss as a result of fracture and fusion of middle ear bone uh, to restrict their mobility. So the collagen is normal in this type 1 but uh, it is reduced in quantity that is termed as haploinsufficiency. Then type 2 uh, osteogenesis imperfecta is uh, fatal in utero or shortly after birth. It is uh, characterized by presence of uh, characteristic faces such as a small nose and microgenethia and various skeletal abnormalities. The death is uh, due to respiratory failure during first month and uh, it is characterized by presence of uh, abnormal form of collagen that are the result of glycine substitution. Radiologically, this uh, type 2 is characterized by presence of numerous uh, fracture that are termed as accordion like fracture that is seen in this picture these are like accordion like accordion so these are accordion like fractures type 3 osteogenesis imperfecta is inherited as an autosomal recessive trait uh, it uh, causes progressive deformities and uh, it is uh, detected at birth it is characterized by presence of a short stature of the baby and misshapenness that is caused by fracture in utero. Dental fractures and hearing loss are common in type 3. Then type 4 of this uh, osteogenesis imperfecta, it resembles type 1 but is clearly are normal and phenotype is more variable. This table is also from Robin's textbook of pathology and it is summarizing the various subtypes of this osteogenesis imperfecta along with the collagen defect, the mode of inheritance, major clinical features and prognosis. Then there are diseases that are associated with mutation of type 2, 9, 10 and 11 collagen. These are uncommon and uh, these type of collagen are actually the components of highline cartilage. These, uh, these mutations produce a variety of disorders that range from fatal to those compatible with the life, but these are obviously associated with some joint pathology or destruction of the joint. They can manifest themselves as milder disorder or severe disorder. When they manifest as uh, milder disorder, it is due to reduced synthesis of normal type 2 collagen, while a severe disorder uh, in the severe disorder, there is uh, no secretion of the type 2 collagen by the chondrocytes and insufficient product formation occurs. Then another group of the disease is the group that is associated with defects in the folding and degradation of the macromolecule. An important member of this, this, this group is mucopolysaccharidosis. Mucopolysaccharidosis is a group of lysosomal steroid disease that are caused by deficiencies in the enzymes acid hydrolases that degrade dermatan sulfate, heparan sulfate and keratan sulfate. Cartilage formation is severely affected as the chondrocyte utilize these constituent for the formation of their the ground substance and uh, this disease manifests due to abnormalities in hyaline cartilage. So cartilage and laga, growth plate, costal cartilage and articular 
surfaces all are affected and these result in short stature chest wall abnormalities and malformed bone then there is another group of disease that is due to defect in metabolic pathways enzyme i channel and transporters one important member of this group is osteopetrosis that is also termed as marble bone disease elbows schonberg disease and stone bone disease this uh, osteopetrosis is a group of rare genetic disease that are characterized by reduced bone resorption and diffuse symmetric skeletal uh, sclerosis uh, this is due to impaired formation of function of the osteoclast uh, the bones uh, mass is increased in this osteopetrosis but it doesn't provide strength to the bone the bone are abnormally brittle and fracture easily like a piece of chalk in chalk in this uh, disease in this osteopetrosis it is inherited by both pattern the autosomal recessive and autosomal dominant and for both of these uh, types there is a mild and severe variety exist the severe variety of autosomal recessive and mild variety of awesome autosomal dominant are common now coming to osteopetrosis pathogenesis one important uh, type is autosomal recessive defect and this is due to mutation in carbonic anhydrase gene carbonic anhydrase in an enzyme that is required by bone and the kidney for the formation of hydrogen ion uh, this hydrogen ion necessary and these are formed from the water and carbon dioxide when this uh, mutation is present this osteopetrosis uh, is also associated with renal tubular acidosis then there is another variety that is autosomal recessive severe form and this is due to chloride channel mutation and mutations in cl cn7 then severe autosomal recessive form is also due to mutation in the proton pump and uh, the gene is tcirg1 gene that is mutated then less severe autosomal recessive variant is associated with rank ligand gene mutation there are many other mutations in macrophage colony stimulating factor rank and osteoprotegrin genes and uh, there is another specific variety of this osteopetrosis that is uh, not uh, autosomal it is x linked osteopetrosis and this x linked osteopetrosis is not due to some enzymatic defect in the uh, acidification process it is basically in it is due to mutation in ikbkg that encodes nemo that is a regulatory subunit of the inhibitor of kappa b kinase complex that is involved in nuclear factor kappa b uh, activation so this x link is not due to defective acidification and uh, as it is a multi-system disorder it is uh, associated with anhydrotic ectodermal dysplasia with immunodeficiency so earlier we have seen that uh, for the bone function bone modeling and remodeling there is a synergistic activity of osteoclast and osteoblast is necessary here the osteoclast activity is deficient so bone legs are metodary canal hence end of the long bone are bulbous and misshapen these bulbous ends are radiologically termed as erlenmeyer flask deformity so uh, this is the radiological characteristic of this uh, osteopetrosis the neural foramina are small and they compress existing nerve and uh, the primary spongiosa persist and fills the medullary cavity they, uh, as uh, a result there is decreased hematopoietic marrow and formation of mature bony trabeculae is prevented the bone that is deposited is uh, woven and ultimately a brittle bone is formed that is fractured very easily now this is the morphology of the osteopetrosis in this picture on the right 
you can see that uh, there is a thin cortex and bone is not remodeled and there is no deposition of uh, laminar bone but uh, the primary spongiosa is filling the medullary cavity while this picture under the text there is a bone of a child with with the uh, autosomal recessive osteopetrosis that is showing the disorganization of bony trabeculae by retention of primary spongiosa that is marked by this mixed spicules and uh, there is further obliteration of the marrow spaces by secondary spongiosa so this uh, accumulation resulted in complete disorganization of the trabeculae and absence of the marrow now the clinical features the severe infantile malignant osteopetrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder that is diagnosed in utero or soon after birth it is associated with fracture anemia and hydrocephaly and uh, associated with uh, post-mortem mortality the survival will have uh, in their infancy the cranial nerve defects such as optic atrophy deafness and facial paralysis and uh, there is uh, often repeated fatal infections that is due to uh, uh, due to no protection by the by the hem uh, hem hematopoietic cells and uh, there is also hepatosplenomegaly that is due to extra medullary hematopoiesis the mild form of the osteopetrosis mild or autosomal dominant form is a benign disease and uh, it may not be detected until adolescence or adulthood when it is discovered on x-ray it is uh, usually the patient present with repeated fracture and uh, the patient at the time of diagnosis may have mild cranial nerve defects and uh, anemia this uh, osteopetrosis is the first genetic bone disease that was effectively treated with the uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation now coming back to the case scenarios we discussed in the start of this lecture a 15 year old boy present to the emergency department with suspected fracture of the left tibia and fibula following a fall he tells you that uh, he has broken several bones in the past and that his mother has a bone disease on physical examination there is slight hearing loss facial asymmetry and hepatosplenomegaly and laboratory test shows anemia on x-ray of left leg there is fracture of both tibia fibula as well as a linear flask deformity so the diagnosis of this case is the second scenario was a two-month-old baby boy that was brought to the emergency department by his adoptive parents who tell you that their baby has been fussy and seems to cry whenever his left arm is touched. On physical examination, there is hypoactivity of baby's left arm and uh, X-ray showed uh, multiple fracture. Multiple radiograph of the skull, chest and all extremities order looking for evidence of other fracture. And on closer physical examination, we do not see any abnormal bruising of the trunk, back or buttock making uh, child abuse less likely but you observe that the child has a blue sclera so the provisional diagnosis can be osteogenesis imperfecta thank you very much for your uh, attention and uh, you can if you have any query or question you can email me your question or you can write in your comments also.